Hi everyone, in this video I'll be doing Advent of Code 2021, Day 10. I'll be doing the problems and then explaining them afterwards. Code is linked down below. Alright, so here's a brief explanation of the puzzles. Basically, we're working with a navigation system, and the navigation system consists of several lines that delimit chunks, and each chunk is basically a set of matching opening and closing parentheses, and they can have subchunks inside. So for example, we have these square brackets, and inside we might have angle brackets, and then these things, and pr like regular parentheses and curly braces. And we can also have chunks next to each other. So for example, we could insert another chunk right here and add more characters and so on. So the question is, some of these lines, some of these lines have been corrupted by the whale that tried to eat us. And some of these are incomplete. So our first task is to delete all of the corrupt lines. A corrupt line is defined as, for example, um, this one. So over here we would have, uh, let's see, we would start with a curly bracket, all right? And then we keep going, keep going, keep going, angle bracket, uh, square bracket, angle bracket. Okay, this all looks good. But then we hit this character, and we were not expecting this character. We wanted a square bracket to close off this thing. So actually, if we paste this into VS Code, I feel like there will be some uh, trying to match here. So you can see the square bracket was not matched. Instead, it was matched with the closing curly brace, which is not what we want. So our task is to find all these corrupt lines that have not what we expect to close the chunk. And then for each line, we have a we compute a score for how corrupted it is. And how corrupt a line is is based on the last character. So whatever character violated the rule that chunks have to close nicely. So if it's a parentheses, um, that's three points, square brackets 57, and so on. So we look up whatever character violated our thing, add that to our score. And at the end, we just need to find the total, I guess, corruption score for all the lines. Now, a pretty common technique when we're working with um, matching parentheses and balancing this stuff is to use a stack. Now, a stack is a data structure that is uh, first in, last out. So basically, a stack, we can insert items and take them out only from the top, though. So for example, um, let's, let's use the previous example. So uh, here we go. OK, so our first characters uh, opening curly brace all right that's pretty pretty standard and then we have a parentheses and then a square bracket and then this and then that and then that okay now we reach a closing character this closing character is a closing curly bracket so when we reach this character right here uh, we can actually take off the top element in the stack because we are expecting uh, at some point that there's going to be a curly bracket to close off this one so after we reach this character, we can delete the curly bracket at the top, and then we just continue on. We get a square bracket, and then we get an angle bracket, and then we close off the angle bracket with this character, so we take that off. Then we get a square, square bracket that closes itself off, and then we are expecting, at this point, a square bracket character to close off the top of the stack. But instead, we get a curly brace closing character. So that's our violating character, um, and we compute its score and add it to our total. So what I did here was basically that. I initialize a stack for every line. Um, and then for every character in that line, I just do the stack process. If it's an opening character, so we go through all the possible pairs. If it's an opening character, then we simply add it to the top of the stack. And then we say, okay, this character is good to go. Otherwise, um, if it's a closing character, then we check if it's what we expect it to be. So we check if it matches the character at the top of the stack. If it does, then we can simply remove that character off the top and say, yes, this character is also good to go. Um, so we check all the uh, all the uh, possible closing characters to see if our current one is good. But if it's not good, so if it's something else we don't expect, like a curly brace to a square bracket, then we remove it. Sorry, we don't remove it. We return the corruption score. Um, otherwise, if at no point there has been a bad character, then we simply return zero. I suppose I should elaborate a bit on this stacking process. Um, if you think about it, basically, if we have a chunk that is valid, then after, like, for example, up here, um, then it is only going to close itself off when it's done. So we can consider 
every chunk to be a self-contained little container. And this stack is a useful data structure to do that because whatever we add on top, if it closes itself off, like if it's totally self-contained, then after we remove it, it's like it never appeared at all. So a stack makes it such that, such that we can delete these two and like say it never exists. These angle brackets, all of these, uh, we just keep deleting until we reach something that is invalid. So I highly suggest you look at stacks as a way to match parentheses to each other. Okay, now for part two, we have already discarded the corrupted lines, but now we need to find all the incomplete lines and complete them. So the difference between corrupted and incomplete is that corrupted lines close off with the wrong character. So for example here, um, but incomplete lines might look like this. So they're just never finished. Our job is to finish those lines. So for example, we would add a square bracket here, an angle bracket here, parentheses here, square bracket there, parentheses there, and angle bra uh, curly brace there to finish this off and make it complete. Um, how exactly we're supposed to compute our answer is kind of convoluted. They provide a process here, but basically we close it off and we compute it by adding stuff and multiplying by five. The details aren't too important. So after that, we look at every line, look at its completion score, sort all of those scores and take the middle value. So it's kind of convoluted, but that's what our computer asks, our submarine, I guess, our submarine computer asks us to do. So this is very similar to part one. Um, we use the same function here to remove all of the corrupted lines. And then after that, um, I wrote a new function that computes the uh, completion score for an incomplete line. So we use the same stack process. After we go through the whole thing, we might have some stuff left. So for example, an incomplete line that looks like this is just going to have a stack at the end that looks like this. And given our stack, we can just uh, complete it. So given this stack, we can very simply complete it by looping through this way and finding all the completing characters. After we find the completing characters, um, we compute the score in this convoluted way by multiplying the answer by five and then adding the respective score for the closing character that we need. And after that, we can just return our answer. So kind of convoluted, but not too difficult to compute. After that, we yeah get the scores of all the lines, sort them, and then find the middle value. So yeah, that, that's it for um, Advent of Code 2021, day 10. I hope you found this video helpful. Hopefully the puzzle was fun today. I think it was quite fun, um, but yeah, you know, pretty standard. I did happen to know the stack method for closing and opening these parentheses and like matching them up. Um, there are other ways to do this, but I think the stack is the uh, most efficient way to do it perhaps. And maybe it's the only way, I don't know, but you know, if you didn't know about the stack method, well, now you know. So hopefully you learned something from today's puzzles. Um, thank you for watching. And if you have any feedback, leave it in the comments below. I'll see you tomorrow for day 11.